Hi everyone and welcome to another episode by Poor Man Gamer. Today I'm gonna break down some of the rivals matches that I just played. I went six and four. Two of those I probably could have won. Just uh one of them I had a real bad opening because I clicked the wrong building. And the other one, the game lagged out at the end and I literally could not move my units and they just froze in place and we lost that last missile. So it should have been 8 and 2, but should have, could have. Uh, what I'm going to do actually right now is show you guys a breakdown, a couple different tips. One, how to rush a harvester with discipline. Right? A lot of people rush and when they think rush, they're thinking I'll just send units and spam them like crazy. Don't do that. Right? Rush with discipline. So, uh... The deck I'm using right now is a GDI deck. I'm starting off with a missile squad, right? As you can see, it pounds away at the Tiberia at the uh, harvesters pretty well. He's gonna run away, so I'm just gonna go chase him at this time. So, just let you guys know, as nothing is really going on right now, every time you start rushing, the missile is also not going up. So if you're a lower level deck, you want to apply pressure where you keep that missile going and at the same time you can do some damage to the harvester. It's a very very hard balance and it's very hard to get right. So as you can see right now I had the early game advantage. I'm just trying to do some damage to his harvesters. You don't have to kill it necessarily like like I did there. Sometimes you just gotta damage them enough and come back for a second round. So right now my primary objective is to try to win this missile which is why I back my orca all the way there. I'm gonna form a nice defensive wall with my lieutenant's strong arm. So then that way he can't steal his missile from me. And boom, there we go. Now I'm gonna go ahead and move my harvester. I'm gonna go ahead and move my shockwave to try to go two on one. Right? My orca is still very low level, so it's, it's basically made of jelly. Right? Any hit, and look at that. It still doesn't die. Like, ah, it's die. Okay? So look at this matchup carefully here. You see how he's got a lot of chem warriors? Even though they're only level 6, they're very, they do a lot of damage against my shockwave troops. So I roll up my Talon actually to start doing more damage towards his uh, shockwave troops. So look, level 8 shockwave versus level 6 chem warrior, and the chem warrior pretty much wins, right? So this is kind of interesting now because he started rolling out confessors, and I don't see them used very often. I don't even know how I'm supposed to counter them. Right? And that was my mistake. I moved my Orca not far enough, right? And I also placed stupid there with my Shockwave. But there's a rhyme and reason, so I'll show you why. Look at this. Okay, I'm gonna pause it for a sec. I intentionally weakened him. So if you take a look, he has got a unit with one, you know, barely any health, another unit with barely any health. And I'm sending my Shockwave to the top just to try to add whatever tack on, whatever damage I could do. The missile. He has, he is still going up right now. I'm actually letting him charge it up for me. Um, he's trying to flame rush my base, I guess, with his Seth. And check, and check this out. This is what's going to happen, right? I actually step off entirely to make sure that this missile will never stall out. I'm waiting for him to charge it up. And then at the last second, I'm hoping to run in and steal it from him. So I get my talent down the bottom and I'm getting lined up. Three quarters of the way, missiles charged up, here I go. I'm gonna rush in from all three sides. Look how easy it is now to take out his troops. So even though he's got a confessor and is designed to shred my troops, I'm able to uh, take it out very quickly. I made a big mistake here pre uh, pressing a predator tank. What I meant to do was roll out another shockwave. Fortunately, he didn't step on that missile tower and contest it, and we were able to steal this win at the very last second. Right? This is something that any of you guys could do. Weaken their enemy units, wait till the last second. No, I would suggest probably two thirds of the way when the missile's going up is a perfect time to charge it. Maybe even three quarters depending on how much health they have. And that is a very, very effective strategy uh, for to help you guys get a win. Uh, I believe this is another good example on how to rush the enemy's harvester or pressure the enemy's harvester with discipline right the key is discipline so meaning you don't charge him blindly you play it right so I don't actually remember what happened in this match we're gonna find out I do my typical opening with a harvester and a missile squad just like 99% of you guys out there right I run it across I don't see anything I don't see anything I see shock see that a lot of people would keep charging up I back it off shockwave engages him send that missile squad back go two on one Take out that shockwave troop first. Ah! Uh, 
Look at that. I barely took any damage and I was able to wipe it out. There's another shockwave troop. I'm gonna run my missile squad down. Pinsar movement. Check this out. Okay. One at the top, one at the bottom. He's totally pinched. I'm doing a lot of damage two on one. I wipe him out. That's two sets of level nine troops I'm able to take out. I move my shockwave troop down because I don't want to engage him one on one. I'm gonna lose. Right? So now I'm gonna let him attack me on the top. I'm gonna move up my talon and add a little bit more damage. That's a, that's the third set of shockwave troops I took out. And and I have only and I haven't lost a single set yet. So now I wall him off and we are able to steal this first missile. He could have um, probably pushed against my tile a little bit better, but he didn't. So now I have an economic advantage, right? Or at least I think I do anyway. I still see his uh, missile squad still on the top. I roll up my Orcanel because it moves a lot faster. I made a mistake and um, almost let his missile squad shoot me. But anyway, playing matchups, Orca goes in and snipes. My uh, shockwave troops act as a shield. As you can see, level seven orcas are—they are so weak. Um, okay, so bad mistake here, folks. If you're trying to contest the missile and get to the shockwave troop, this is not what you do. Clearly, you can't touch the talon with the shockwave. So why are you doing it? At the top, I pressure his harvester. I try to harm his economy even more. Right? He's finally rolling out his missile squad. I probably should have just let my talon die, and I. By luck, I did. I love my shockwave troop. I'm playing my matchup here. I'm standing on two tiles, uh, missile tiles. I roll up my lieutenant's strong arm. I have him completely walled off, and I don't expect him to break through. And I was able to pick up this win, right? So by playing aggressively, that's what I mean by pressing the harvester with discipline. Very, very important. We're gonna go through one more video in which I actually lost. Um, it was a very, very uh, frustrating loss. But uh, it was a loss nonetheless. It was against a much higher level opponent. Um, we're gonna, yeah, and I'll, and I'll show you guys what happened. That sometimes you're gonna run into a matchup that you just can't win, right? Or, or that it's very, very Three, difficult to win. Two, so we're actually gonna, uh, I'm on the left hand side there, he's on the right. We're gonna uh, actually see the whole map. So then. I can also get a better understanding. So he starts off with a double harvester. So here's the problem. When really high level opponents have a double harvester like this, it takes so long to take out a harvester because they're so strong. I anticipated that he was going to roll out a chem buggy, right? So that's why I actually jumped into my pitbo instead of rolling out with another um, missile squad. And if you take a look at here, the problem is he is just overpowering me, right? Everything just takes so long to kill. So I already thrown everything I had at this, um, what do you call it? At this harvester. At this time, I was able to steal that uh, harvester, but I had to invest two missile troops and now a, um, what do you call it? And a pit bull to get that win, right? So I'm gonna go ahead and switch to my view now. I try to go 2 on 1 here because he's level 10, alright? I do what I can, I move my missile squad down. Um, and really he's on all 3 tiles, I'm not, I try my best to defend against it, I'm rolling up against his, uh, I'm jumping on all 3 tiles to try to steal this first missile. Out comes his chem buggy, I'm not overly concerned, I just want this missile. I am able to get it, so I'm off to a good start, not great. And as you can see, he uses his chem buggies pretty well. I don't even bother moving my missile squad because it just does so much damage against me. It just shreds me. I try to use an orca on the bottom, but by now he has gotten he's able to roll his uh, temple of knot units. And as you can see, like a level ten cyborg, even though we got that first missile, what? Um, so shockwaves are supposed to be able to take out um, cyborgs, right? But when you go level 10 versus level 8, just look how much, look at the tremendous amount of damage that he does. Um, I try to snipe and do some damage against his uh, bug. And at this stage of the game, I'm thinking, I have weakened him as far as I could. And I don't want to stall out the missile. So I held off there for a split second, hoping that I could get an advantage. But he rolls out a level 10 Basilisk. I don't even see level 10 Basilisk in the Tiberium League sometimes. Right, so I'm letting him try to get this missile. It's at two thirds, right? And I did not expect him to roll out another um, cyborg at the top so quickly. I tried to move in at the last second here to try to steal this missile, 
but it just goes by so quickly. He's on all three tiles. I don't do enough damage against his units, right? And look at that Basculus. Like, holy crap, he just shreds me. So, for the rest of this game, really, there's not much to watch. I am not able to contest this missile despite my best efforts. And, um... Yeah, I mean, look how long it took that Talon to wipe out his level 10 Basilisk. Like, that's crazy. And if you look at his economy right now, he's got a huge economic advantage. I'm trying my best to play this the right way. I'm moving my tank up to the middle to try to take out that, um... Not buggy. And I know that it's gonna move right very, very quickly now. He plays it very smart by rolling his Harvester uh, on one of the tiles. Harvesters have a lot of health, especially when they're level 10. So I'm trying to get 2 out of 3. I roll out my own Harvester up there. I try to tile block him. But again, with the Basilisk, right? So I try to get my Talon there. I should have slipped my Talon down to try to block off his Harvester, right? I wasn't able to do so uh, because of that one mistake there. And that one mistake ended up costing me the game. I'm trying my best to contest this uh, third missile, I lost it, so if I blocked off his Harvester there, I may have been able to sneak out this win. So this is one of those games where no matter how hard you try, the opponent is just stronger. You do what you can. And so folks, I hope uh, these tips help you win the Rivals Champions. Let me know how you do, and as always, have a wonderful day. Take care.